this is Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make this really cute bracelet. I have not named it yet, but you can see that it has this really pretty decor in front here and a little woven beadwork in front and then it's a herringbone in the back. Really cute little bracelet. I recently have put onto my website these new bicone beads. They are four by five millimeter bicones. So they're kind of more of a saucer shape and I really wanted to use them because I think they're really pretty. So I am using those in this tutorial. However, because I know not everybody can get them, um, even though they're on my website, I do not ship internationally. And maybe you just don't want to get them. You want to use something you have. So I went ahead and made the same stitch exactly. Nothing changes from this one to this one except I used a 4x3 rondelle instead of the 4x5 bicones. So they both turn out really pretty. Let me see if I can get this one on so you can look at it. And like I said, it doesn't change at all. The tutorial for this one, you'll do exactly the same with this one if you decide to use a 4x3 rondelle. It turns out really pretty. You can do it in all kinds of color schemes. I wanted this one to be kind of holiday-ish, so this is the color scheme I did for this one. And this one, I just really like aqua. So I decided to use uh, imitation um, jade in the aqua color in my 4x3. And I think they both turned out really pretty. So I always want to give you an alternative if I'm using a bead that isn't readily easily found. So this is your easily found one and this is the one you can get on my website on the specialty beads page. So let's go ahead and look and see what it takes. I kind of repeat myself in the next segment anyway. So let's stop this and move on. Okay, for this project today, I wanted to use some new beads that I've recently acquired and put on the website. These are 4x5 bicones. So instead of them being pointy on both sides, they're a little flatter, more saucer shaped. They're very nicely faceted and they're very uniform in shape per strand. And some of them are a little larger than the others. They're supposed to be 4x5, um, however, this one's more like 4x6. Most of them are this size here, and they're really very pretty, and I have them in several colors. We're going to be using those, however, and they're on the specialty beads page on my website. However, if you cannot get some of these, then you can use some 4x3 rondelles. And most people have those in their stash, and if not, they're very easy to come by. Whether you shop my website or not, you should be able to find some 4x3 rondelles. I have made one of the bracelets with them so that you can see what they look like. Um, they are a little bit rounder and not quite as sharp looking as these bicones, but they work very well in this particular design. So you can do this design regardless if you have the new beads or not. Now, we're going to be using some seed beads, and these are all Toho. We're using two different colors of Edo seed beads. I'm using an opaque beige and a metallic bronze, and then we're going to be using a 15-0. My 15-0 I'm using an antique bronze. Also, we're going to be using a 3x2 rondelle. You can use a 3mm bicone if you would like. Um, this is sunshine color. And you can also get those on my website if you don't have any. However, they're pretty easy to come by, so you should be able to get some of those. And then a toggle clasp or any clasping that you would like to use for this project. I am using an antique copper tone for mine. We will be using Fireline 6 pound and I'm using it in the smoke color because I'm using darker beads and even though my crystal is light and my one of my Eidos is light, I'm still going to use the smoke Fireline because I think it blends a little bit better. Now in this particular one I use the crystal because I'm using predominantly lighter beads. So you can make your choice for that. And I'm using a size 12 beading needle. You're going to need to put onto your beading needle about five and a half feet to start this with. 
However, you're going to need to extend your fire line during this project. So um, I may be showing you how to do that, but if I do not, then you will need to reference the video that I will put in the description box beneath the video player. I'll put a link to show you how to do that. Now, let's go ahead and gather our things together and get started. Okay, to start this project, we're going to be making the center portion of our bracelet first, and then we're going to add the back. So, what you're going to do is you're going to pick up four 8 seed beads onto your needle, and I'm starting with my bronze color and I'm going to bring these down to the end of my thread. Now you're going to want to leave a decent amount of thread, four to six inches at least, to have enough to extend for our herringbone ends. So um, you can leave a whole bunch if you don't want to extend it. However, it's going to get in your way. So just leave a fairly decent sized tail so that you can extend and then we're going to go back through the first bead on the tail side and pull our thread through. Hold on to that bead and hold on to your tail and pull it into a little unit like this. And then let's get in a little closer. We're going to sew through this entire unit. So we're going to, we're coming out of the 8 on top. We're going to go into the 8 on the side right next to where our thread is coming out. And we're just going to sew all the way around the entire unit, each bead individually, until we get to where our working thread, which is the needle side, and our tail thread are next to each other. And we're going to go ahead and tie a knot. So just cross your working thread over your tail thread and then pass your tail thread through the resulting loop twice and then pull a knot down between the beads. And this is what you should have, just like this. And get in just a tad closer here. And we are going to go ahead and sew around this entire thing again to make sure it's nice and secure. So I'm going to go into the bead next to where my knot is here. And I'm just going to sew all the way around just to make sure that my knot doesn't slide and that this particular unit is secure since it is my starting point here. Okay, so now you can see that I have my tail thread on one side and my working thread on the other. What I'm going to do from this point is I'm going to go ahead and put a little um, embellishment on top of this and then we're going to move into the actual units. So we're going to pick up a 15 0 seed bead and a 3 by 2 crystal like this. And we're coming out of this side of this bead on the top of our unit if you're holding it the way I am and we're going to go diagonal into the bottom bead. So we're going into the opposite bead on the opposite side. And we're just going to pull this up. Now it likes to twist and do weird things, so just manipulate it until it gets correct here. Now we have one side attached here and one side attached here. We're now coming out of this side. We're going to attach the other two sides by picking up a 15 0 seed bead and just going back into the crystal on top, which this is a tiny unit, so give me a second here. I've had too much coffee this morning. Now, I'm going to hold onto that crystal between my thumb and my finger and pull this 15 0 seed bead down and then readjust my little crystal on the top. Then I'm going to pick up another 15 0 seed bead and I'm going to go into the opposite side of the bead we started in, so here. And pull this down. Now this will anchor this crystal and give it four spots of attachment, just like this. Now we're coming out of this top bead, we're going to sew down into the bottom bead here, the bottom 8-0, 
and then we're going to pick up an 80 in our accent color so my accent color is my beige color I'm going to pick up a beige and then I'm going to pick up one of my four by five crystals or you can pick up a rondelle and then we're going to pick up an 80 seed bead in our accent color now if you're using rondelles you don't have to do anything any differently at this point that I'm showing you. So just follow along exactly the same. Now we're going to go into the opposite side of the bead we're coming out of, right here. Now I'm holding on to my tail to give me a little bit of stability here. So now that I've gone through the other side, this wraps the, the crystal and the two eightos into a little loop here. Then I'm going, I'm coming out of the 8 that I am attaching to, and I'm going to go back through all three of these beads just to secure them. And then back into the 8 I started in. Now I have to travel down to this crystal to do the other half of my unit. So I'm going to go down into this 8 here. And then I'm going to go up into the crystal. Now I'm going to pick up an 8 in my accent color, an 8 in my metallic bronze, and an 8 in my accent color, just like this. Then I'm going to go back through the crystal I'm coming out of on the opposite side, just like this. Now I'm going to sew back through this entire attachment here. So I'm going to go down through this 8 here and the bronze 8 which I got kind of a funny one. <laughs> oh well. And then I'm going to go into oh, that 8 I think. I think I'm going to have to back out. So sorry guys, but that 8 is weird and it's going to mess up my weave. So I'm just going to back out of this and grab a different 8 in the bronze color here. Sometimes this happens. So we're going to have an 8 in the accent color, an 8 in the bronze, and an 8 in the accent color. And we're going to go into the opposite side of the crystal, just like this. And we're going to pull this down. And now we have to secure this by sewing back through those three beads. So I'm coming out of the crystal. I'm going to go down into the 8 And then the 8 here. 8 on this side. And then into the crystal again. Now we're going to sew around and add embellishments to this. So <clears throat> we're going to go, we're in the crystal, we're going to go down into the 8 here. Then we're going to pick up a 15 0 seed bead and we're going to go into the 8 on the end here. And just to make sure we can pass through, we're going to go ahead and make our next connection. Just to have it there because once you put the 8 O's on both, or the 15 O's on both sides of the 8 O's, it can block it. So you're going to pick up three 8 O seed beads and you're going to ignore that 15 O and you're going to go into the opposite side of the 8 O you're coming out of. And then you're going to sew around these three beads. This just ensures that we're not going to block ourselves from being able to make our next connection. So we're just going to go all the way through all of these beads and then come out of the 8 we're attaching to. Just like this. I'll get in even a little closer. Now I'm going to pick up another 15 0 seed bead and I'm going to pass into the next 8 -oh. So I'm coming out of this bottom metallic bronze. I'm going to go up into the beige color one and pop a uh, 15 -oh seed bead in between. Now we're coming out of the beige 8 -oh. We're going to pick up one of our crystals onto our needle and we're going to pass into the next 8 -oh here and pull this down between the 8 -ohs. Then pick up a 15 -oh seed bead 
and pass through the 80 on the unit we embellished here with the crystal. Pull that 15 OC bead down. I'm going to turn my unit a little bit here. I'm going to pick up another 15 O and I'm going I'm now coming out of the unit with the crystal on it. I'm going to go down into the first bronze or excuse me beige 80. And then I'm going to pick up my crystal and I'm going to go into the next 80. And I'm going to pass through the 15 O on the other side of it just like this. Then I'm going to go through the 80 on the bottom here and the 15 0 on the other side. And if you're having issues with that, you can pass just from 80 to 80 also. But if you can go through the 15 0s, go through them. And then we're going to go up through the 80 and the crystal on this side. Then we're going to pick up two 15 0 seed beads onto our needle. Like this. And we're going to go from the side of this crystal here directly up through the center of the crystal in the middle. Now if you're using a rondelle, you kind of have to manipulate down and around it, but it still works. Just go straight up through that middle crystal. And then pull these two 15 O's down until they line up really nicely between the 8 O and the crystal. Now, because this wants to go, it's easier to go through in a diagonal, we're going to put the other side on in a diagonal here. So we are going to, we're coming out of this middle crystal, we're going to pick up two 15 O's and we're going to go into this side of this crystal here. And we're going to pull this down. And arrange them so that they lay very nicely right between the 8 and the crystal. And then we're going to do the other side. So we're going to pick up two 15 O's and we're going to go down into the middle crystal right here. Now you have 15 O's on the other side now, so just move them out of the way and pull these down. And I just lost my needle. It's going to be one of those days, guys. I seem to pull my needle off my thread quite often. So let me do this. If I don't do it quickly, then I'll just come back and cut this part out. But I did it. So now I'm coming out of this middle crystal here and I'm going to pick up two 15 O seed beads. And I am going to go into this side of the crystal now on the bottom here. And I'm going to pull this up. Now everything's going to get loose on your embellishment, so you're going to pull straight through the crystal. Try not to scrape your thread or um, stress it on the side of your crystal. And just pull until your embellishment looks really nice like this. Now, you can sew all the way around your unit to get back to this one if you would like, or you can go up through your embellishment. It just depends on the thread path and how easy you can pass through. So what I'm doing, this is a shortcut instead of sewing all the way around and getting into this one and then moving through this complete little unit on the end here. I am just coming up from my crystal into the two 15 O's and then in a diagonal through the center bead and then through these two 15 O's. And if I can't pick up both of them, I can just go through and then pick them up. So just like this, do a little shortcut. Then we're going to go down into this 8 O seed bead here and come through it. If you can't get the 15 O, don't worry about it. Just go through the 8 O on your bronze unit here. Ignore the 15 O on the other side, just like this. The thread will pull in and you won't see it like that. So you don't have to worry about traveling through those 15 O's. Now we're coming out of this top unit or this top bead right here in our little right angle weave unit and we're going to embellish it. So we're going to pick up a 15 O seed bead, we're going to pick up a crystal, and we're going to pick up a 15 O seed bead like this and we're going to go from this bead into this one here. <clears throat> 
and just lay it over the top, just like that. Now we're going to pick up a 15-0. We're going to go back through the crystal. So just go right through it. I'm going to hold on to it, pull that 15-0 down, and then I'm going to pick up another 15-0, and I'm going to go back into this 8-0 we're attaching to, avoiding the 15-0s on either side. Just pull this little 15-0 up against your crystal, just like this. Now it's anchored on all sides. We're going to, we're coming out of the bead we've attached this unit to. We're going to go down into the side bead here. And we're going to go up into the 8-0 here. We're going to make one more unit. And we are going to do this together, then we'll go off um, camera and we will make one, two, three, four, five units in all together. But let's do another one here. So we're coming out of this 8-0 seed bead here. We need to pick up an 8-0 in our accent color, which will be my beige, and then a crystal, and then an accent color. So just like this, and then go into the opposite side of the bead you're coming out of. Pull these down, and sew through them to secure them. <clears throat> And then back up through the bead we're attaching to. And then we have to sew down into the crystal. So we're going to go into this side bead again and down into the crystal. Now we are going to pick up three eight-os. So I'm going to pick up my accent color, my bronze color, and my accent color, just like this and I'm going to go into the opposite side of the bead I'm coming out of. Then I'm going to sew back through all three of these beads. My tail out of there. See, leaving a long tail can mess with you, but we need that, so we put up with it. Sew through all three of the beads. Get into the crystal here and then come up through your 8-0 seed bead here. <clears throat> Pick up a 15-0 seed bead and go into the 8-0 on the very end here. Then pick up three of your main color, so this is my bronze color. I'm going to pick up three 8-0 seed beads and I'm going to go into the opposite side of the bead I'm coming out of, ignoring the 15-0 I just put there. And just pull these three down. Then I'm going to secure them. So I'm going to sew through all three of these and again ignore the 15-0 that I just put between those 8-0's. So I come up through and then come back into the attaching 8-0 here. Then pick up a 15-0 seed bead. Go through the 8-0 in your accent color here. And then you're going to pick up a crystal. And you're going to go from 80 to 80 and pop a crystal in between. Or a rondelle, whatever you're using. And then we're going to pick up a 15-0 and we're going to go into the 80 we're attaching to. Then we're going to pick up another 15-0 and we're going to go into the 8-0 on this side. <clears throat> then we're going to pick up another one of our crystals and we're going to go into the 8-0 straight across here and pop this down. Now we have to sew back to get to the crystal. So you can go directly into just the 8-0's. You don't have to pass through those 15-0's. Because of the way we put the 15-0's on, we can do this without messing up our thread path or seeing our thread. So I'm just going from 8-0 to 8-0. And then I'm going to go from this 8-0 to this 8-0 and crystal here. Just like this. 
and you can see my thread just cinches down in there because that's the original thread path and the 15-0 is an embellishment on top of it so it works okay now I need to I'm coming out of the crystal I need to put on my embellishment of 15 O's on either side of the crystals here so I'm going to pick up two 15 O seed beads and if you need to if you want to you can always do three 15 O's but I find that the two 15 O's works well so I'm coming out of this side of the crystal I'm going to go directly down into the crystal in the middle and just pull my thread in a diagonal here and then I'm going to pick up two 15 O's and I'm going to go into the opposite side of the opposite crystal here then I'm going to pick up two 15 O's come here and I'm going to go back up into the middle crystal and sometimes you have to kind of manipulate your needle through I sew very tightly too so it can be kind of squishy to get it through just like that and then pull your embellishment nice and neat make sure your 15 O's are next to each other and not all spread out and weird looking and then pick up two 15 O's and then go back into the crystal here Now we're going to do a shortcut to travel. Again, you can sew through all of your beads and come down here and then sew through your end unit if you'd like, but I am bypassing that. It can be hard to do that, but it can also be hard to do this one. So whichever way works better for you. Then we're going to go through these two 15 O's on this side of the crystal, we're coming out here, and I'm going to pass through that center crystal and sometimes it's easier just to go ahead and pass through the center crystal just like this and then pick up the 15 O's on the other side so I can just go through these two 15 O's here and I'm working in a diagonal of course so now I want to make sure that my embellishment looks good I'm coming out of these two 15 O's now because I did my little shortcut now I'm going to go into this 8 here and I'm going to just bypass that 15 go into the other 8 pull my thread through nice and tight and then I'm going to pick up a 15 seed bead and a crystal a 3 by 2 and a 15 like this and I am coming out of this side of this bead I'm going to go into the opposite side of the opposite bead in this unit just like this pull this down pick up a 15 0 go back through the crystal and the easiest way to do that is to hold on to your crystal and pull your 15 0 through that way you can give a little tug and secure that unit nice and neat as you go through it and then pick up another 15 0 go through the 8 0 you can bypass those 15 0's again and just go through the 8 0 that you're attaching to and now this is what you have you're going to sew down the side and sew down the end bead just like this and then you're going to make three more of these units with these units in between and you're going to end on one of these units so if you need to back up the video and watch a couple of times or follow a couple of times until you get the pattern down go ahead and do that and we will have five of these units with these little units in between and then we'll move on to the next stage okay so now as you can see I have five of my red crystal units my main units and I have six of my right angle weave units so we started on a right angle weave unit and we end on a right angle weave unit with our little crystal on top now we're coming out of the very top of this last right angle weave unit we're going to put a 15 0 embellishment all the way around and then we'll we we will begin the back of our bracelet so you're coming out of this bead right here 
Make sure before you do this, you have a nice long uh, piece of fire line. So extend somewhere in the first or the last unit you're going to make if you need to extend your fire line um, so that you don't have to pass 15 nos over your extension. So now we're coming out of this very last bead on the very end here and we're going to sew up into the side bead. And this is where we will start our next embellishment is through this bead here. So you're going to pick up four 15 O seed beads and you're going to pass from this 8 O into the crystal and the hole should be right there. You should be able to pass through it. You can also do that with the um, rondelle. It might be a little tighter fit, but it will pass right through there. Then you're going to pick up four more 15 O seed beads. And once you've done that, you're going to pass from this crystal to the 8 o on the side of the right angle weave unit with the crystal on top. So this little side 8 o So you're going from crystal to 8 o to crystal and putting four 15 o seed beads in between each one. And we're going to do that until we get all the way down to where we're passing through this last 8 o here, like we did here. So go ahead and continue putting five 15, or excuse me, four 15 O seed beads. And again, um, I thought it was going to change on this version to this version and you'll need more 15 O's, but you don't. So this version is exactly the same in every step as this version is. So this is the one with the rondelles, of course. So go ahead and put your four 15 O's all the way until you get to this little 8 O here and we'll be back. Okay, so now I have traveled with my four 15 O seed beads all the way to the very end. Now just arrange them so they're really nice. I have gone from this crystal to this side 8 o in my very last little right angle weave unit here. You can see my tail is on the top bead here and I'm coming out of the side bead. I'm going to make sure my embellishment looks the way I want it to look. Keep it nice, keep the tension on it, and then go into the top bead. Just ignore the tail we left behind. Go into, I'm calling this bead here the top bead on the very end of the unit. And then we are going to go into the side bead on the other side of the unit from which we were working. So now we're coming out this side right here and we're going to do the same thing we did on the other side. So we're just going to pick up our four 15 O seed beads onto our needle and we're going to pass from this 8 O into the crystal. And we're going to continue doing that from the crystal to the 8 o, all the way to the very end again. When we're coming out of this very side bead here, we'll be back. So just continue putting in your 15 o seed beads on this side now. Okay, now as you can see, I've just put in my last embellishment from my crystal to the side 8 o right here on the end. Now. I'm going to go up into the very end bead on that right angle weave unit right there. Now we're going to start a herringbone stitch and we're going to do 18 units of herringbone to do the back of our bracelet. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to pick up a 15 O seed bead and then two 8 O's and I'm using my main color, my bronze color, and then a 15 O seed bead. So this is what I have and I'm going to go into the opposite side of the bead I'm coming out of and I'm going to pull this down. Now I'm going to sew back through here again so that I can make sure that it's nice and um, supported or uh, secure I guess would be the word. So we're coming up through this 8 o. As we do this we're going to go ahead and add another of our, no, Let's just go ahead and sew through these. Now don't pull those 8 o's together. You want enough slack in there to keep them so that they're open. And then we're going to go into the 15 o and the bead we're anchor anchoring to. And then let's go back up the 15 o and the 8 o on this side. 
just like this. Then we're going to pick up two 8 seed beads and we're going to cross over. So we're coming out of this bead right here. We're going to go down into the bead next to it. And we're going to pull these two 8 seed beads down on top. Now we have to cross over and come back up. And as we do that, we're going to pick up a 15-0 and put it in between the beads. This just makes a nice um, embellishment that covers the thread bridge. So we're coming from this bead and we're going to go up into just the 8-0 on this side and the 8-0 above it. So ignoring the 15-0 on the bottom there. And we're going to pull this 15-0 in between the two 8-0s, just like this. Every herringbone has a nice thread bridge in between, and this 15 oh, is just an embellishment that will hide that. So now we're going to pick up another two 8 0 seed beads. We're coming out of this 8 0 here. We're going to cross over and go down through one 8 0 on this side. And we're going to pull these two 8 0s down until they lay out on top of the two previous. We're going to pick up a 15-0 seed bead. We're going to cross directly over from where our thread is coming out, go up two beads on this side. So it's down one, up two, and place your 15-0 in between the two beads, just like this. And then again, pick up two, 18 or 80 seed beads, not 18 0, and go down from you're coming out here, go down one bead, lay them out nice and neat, pick up a 15 0, and then pass up two beads on this side and pop that 15 0 between the two, just like that. You're going to continue doing that for 18 units. So each of these double beads here are your units. So you count one, two, three, four on one side. And you're going to do that until you have 18 of them. If you want a seven inch bracelet, if you want a longer bracelet, then you will have to make more. If you want a shorter bracelet, you'll have to make less. And we can discuss that when we come back. Okay, so now I have done my 18 units of herringbone and <clears throat> I'm going to end up with a, around a seven inch bracelet. Now, if you're a very small person, you want about a six inch bracelet, maybe a little over six inches. Um, or if you're a large person, you want an eight inch bracelet, maybe a little bit larger than that. So you'll want to increase or decrease the amount of herringbone that you do. Now you can lay it on your wrist once you've made your center portion and while you're making your herringbone you're not quite to the center of your wrist, just about there. And that will tell you that you'll have enough room for your clasping and you can measure it that way or you can Put your ruler in the center, the very center unit here, and measure it over. Now, you can see I'm just a little over three inches here. So by the time I put my clasping on, I'm going to be somewhere in this region here. So that's going to give me, if it's three and a half, it's going to give me around seven inches, maybe a tiny bit longer. So that's how you're going to figure out how long you want to make your herringbone because you're going to make the exact same amount of units on the other side. And once you have the amount of units that you want, you're coming out of one side of your herringbone, you're going to pick up an 8 seed bead. You're going to go through your clasping loop and then you're going to go back down through that 8 seed bead right here. And just the 8 and just pull it down, pull the clasp down to the 8 and then go into the other side of your herringbone here. Pull this down and pick up a 15 0 seed bead. Cross over to the bead next to the one you're coming out of and go up through the 8 0 on this side and the 8 0 under your clasping. Pull the 15 0 down so that it lines up between the herringbone stitch, just like this. And then we're going to sew through this a couple of times. 
This time we're going to go down through the 8 and two beads travel through the uh, 15 0 and back up so that we don't have a whole bunch of thread in one spot. So I'm going to go down through this 8 and then I'm going to go down through two of my herringbone beads right here and pull this through. Then I'm going to travel through the 15 0 between the herringbone stitch here and then I'm going to go up two beads on this side and then I'm going to go up through the 8 here and the clasp. Now I'm going to go back down and I'm going to go through one here, one bead in the herringbone, then I'm going to go through the 15 0 then I'm going to come back up this side. Now you can do that a couple of times alternating the beads you go through on your um, herringbone stitch so that you can do a couple more stitches here. Uh, let me get up through this 8 here. Okay, come on. I know I can do it. There we go. So I'm going to go through this 8 Then I'm going to go through the clasping. Then I'm going to go back down into the 8 right underneath the clasping here. And then I'm going to go into this 8 I'm going to go down two here. Now I have three passes of thread. I can cross over, go back up through it again. It just depends on how secure you want it. Or you can put a wire guardian here. However, that's going to give you more length. So just be aware of that. Now that I'm coming through this one, I'm going to cross through this 15 0 seed bead. I'm going to turn over my piece and bring the thread to the back and then the thread that's between the herringbone stitch on the back here, I'm going to grab underneath it. I'm going to go underneath it and make myself a loop and then go through the loop and tie a knot. Then I'm going to go back down into my herringbone stitch a couple of beads, pull this down nice and tight, and then I'm going to go under another thread bridge, make a loop, and tie another knot. Now just make sure you don't distort your herringbone, so just straighten it out. Go down a couple more. And here I'm just going to pull my thread to the back. I'm going to cut my thread down and I've left a tag, which is kind of long, but I'm just going to bring it to the center of my stitch here and I'm going to get my heat close to it and I'm just going to melt it down into the stitch like this. And now I have one half of my bracelet finished. So what I want you to do is grab another piece of thread, oh, probably about three feet long, just to make sure you have enough. And we'll be right back. We put your needle on that new piece of thread, and then we're going to extend this side and we're going to make our herringbone on this side. Okay, so now I have got another piece of thread out and I've made it fairly long about three feet just to make sure I have enough I have put my needle on one side on the other side I'm going to extend this piece we left for a tail and then I will be able to use the long length that I've put on my needle <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a little square knot here you're going to need a lighter or a thread burner and a pair of scissors. So I like to cut this. I've made it pretty long. I'm going to cut it down, leaving myself at least a good two inches here to work with. And then I'm going to take my new thread and I'm just going to turn this piece over. I'm going to cross my new thread under my tail thread, just like this. And then I'm going to take that tail thread and go around the new thread. And then on the top here, I'm going to cross the two ends and bring one into the loop that results, like this. And now I'm just going to pull that into a little square knot and tighten it. 
Then I'm going to take these two ends and let me make sure that's tight enough. And then I am going to cut them short. I'm going to cut them right about there. And then I'm just going to hold on to these two and I'm going to get my heat from my lighter. In the bottom of the flame, I'm just going to get it close and pass the heat over those two ends until they turn into little tiny blobs like this on the end. Let me get you closer. So you can see these two little tiny blobs. Then I'm going to take the tail end that's coming out of my piece and my new thread and I'm just going to pull on it and join those two blobs together. Now I have a really nice tight joint. Make sure you keep that little end very small like this. So, or the little blobs, very small, so that when you join it together you don't get a great big blob. You can also just kind of take your flat nose pliers and kind of squish it down a little so it's a little bit thinner too. A lot of times I like to try to get it a lot closer to my piece because what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew through this unit on the back, this is the back of my piece, and try to get this little blob inside this unit so that when I start sewing with my 15 O's, I won't have it in my way because a lot of times 15 O's won't pass very well over the little blob. So I'm coming out of this 8 O here on the end. I'm going to come down into the side bead here and I'm going to draw my needle through and bring my knot through my little joint. Come on, come through. There we go. And then I'm going to go through this bead. Now you have some resistance simply because of the fact that you've sewn through these beads a few times and it doesn't want to pass that all that easily through them. So um, I'm just going to go up into this other bead here. Come on, side bead. Because my unit is pretty tight, I just have to kind of pass through it. And I don't think my knot is going to stay inside. I think I'm going to end up with my knot still having to work with it here. If I'm really close, then once I sew through, my knot will be inside. Let me try to go ahead and go through one more time and try to hide that knot inside this unit. Simply because it's much easier to deal with if you do that. So I'm going to draw my knot through again and then I'm going to go through this bead again and then I'm going to go through this bead again. And if you're not as closer you only have to go through once but my knot was a little bit away from my work so I'm going to go through both of these beads here. And now my knot is inside and I can go ahead and work from here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a 15 O and I'm going to pick up an, two 8 O's and I'm going to pick up a 15 O and we're going to pass through this bead again on the very end here. Now I am going to sew up through the 15 O on this side and the 8 on that side and just kind of pull it to the side so that the 8 lay next to each other like this. Then I'm going to go through the other 8 on the other side here and the 15 and then I'm going to go back through my connecting bead here. Now I'm going to go up into the 15 and the 8 on this side right here. Just like that. Now I'm going to pick up two 8 seed beads and I'm going to pass down one 8 So I'm going to ignore this 15 under. I'm going to cross over and go through the 8 Pull these two 8 that I added to my thread down. Then I'm going to pick up a 15 I'm going to cross over and go into the 8 right next to where I'm coming out, ignoring this 15 go into the 8 and the 8 above it, just like this. Sorry, that wasn't very graceful, but there you have it. 
Now I'm going to pick up another set of 8-0's. So two 8-0's and I'm going to go down one on this side. Lay my 8-0's out on top of the previous 8-0's. Pick up a 15-0, cross over, and go up two 8-0's on this side. And we're going to continue doing that again until we have 18 units on this side. So go ahead and finish your herringbone and we'll be back. Okay, so now you can see I've done my 18 units of herringbone on this side. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna put my clasping on this side and because I'm using a toggle and I want it to draw through nicely and I want just a tiny bit more length, I'm going to use two eightos on this side. So I'm coming out of one side of my herringbone here. After making my last stitch, I'm going to pick up two eight-o seed beads and I'm going to drop them down to my piece. Then I'm going to pick up my clasp and I'm going to go through the loop on my clasp and I'm going to then go through both the 80 seed beads right here. And I'm just going to grab a hold of those two 80s. I'm going to pull my thread through until I can draw that clasp down. Then I'm going to go through the 80 on this side. I'm going to go ahead and go down two this time, right here. I'm going to go down two beads. Then I'm going to go through this little 15 O. Then I'm going to go back up two beads on this side now. And then <clears throat> I'm going to go up through both of my 8 seed beads here. Then I'm going to go back down into both of my 8 seed beads right under the clasping. Now I am going to go down one 8 seed bead on this side. <clears throat> I'm going to pick up my 15 O and I am going to cross over into the 8 on this side because we finished our last herringbone but we didn't go back through so we don't have a 15-0 there. So we're going to place that 15-0 and then we're going to go back up through both of the 8 here and through the clasp just like this. Pull this through and turn it around here and then I'm going to go back down into my two 8-0's and if your clasp gets a little tight just kind of move it back. Go down through your two 8-0's it's easier to just go through those two. Pull your thread through and then go down into two or three whatever you want Ados on this side. Two is probably better. You don't want to get your ados distorted. Then turn over your piece, draw your thread to the center, and go underneath the thread bridge between the two ado seed beads in your herringbone stitch here. There's an obvious thread bridge right in the center, right here, and go underneath it, pull your thread, and three feet of thread was a little much, but it's okay. Then we're going to make a loop, go through the loop, and draw a knot down. Do this gently, make sure it's in the center of that thread bridge so you don't distort your herringbone. And then go down two more beads in your herringbone. Draw your thread to the center, go underneath the thread bridge in the center of those beads, make another loop, and Go through the loop and draw down a knot right in the center. Then go down a couple more beads and exit. Pull your thread to the center and just cut it down. And again, leave yourself a little tag. I'm positioning it like this so that you can see it. And then I'm just going to get my lighter and I'm going to get close and I'm going to melt that in. And while it's still warm, I just kind of plaster it 
into the beads like that. Now, I'm going to back off. And here's my little bracelet. It's a cute little thing. And here's the one I did with rondelles. Right here. So you can do any color scheming you want. I did mine in red and bronze because I thought it'd be kind of pretty for the holiday season coming up. You can do it in any color scheming you want with any color seed beads you want. I used in this one, I used a opaque aqua imitation jade, I believe, three, uh, four by three rondelle. So I'm going to put this on and I'm going to let you see what it looks like and show you that like this and of course anything that has something in the front and it's kind of bare in the back it turns a little but this isn't too bad because it's flat but you want to make your herringbone to where it's not really really loose I've been kind of losing weight lately so my regular size is a little bit bigger than usual I think I made this one a little bit tighter let's see put this one on. I think this one is actually, maybe not, it's a seven inch too, but um, because I've been losing weight, my wrist is a little smaller than normal. So that's what that looks like. Like I said, they do move, but they're not too horrible. And in normal, you know, just moving around, it's pretty cute. I think they turn out really pretty. And like I said, you can always make these just a tad bit tighter. You don't want them really tight. But if you make your back part really big, then it's going to move all over the place. So that's what that looks like. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button and the little notification bell and all that good stuff. And we can continue making pieces together. Okay, bye-bye.